Hey guys, Rick Kerr and the Scaly Dad, and this is kind of an impromptu opportunity. We're actually down here filming in Charleston, South Carolina at the world famous Hyman's Seafood Restaurant, um, right down here on Meeting Street. And uh, in talking to the owner, Eli Hyman, he pointed out his, one of his managers, Chad Walker, and I thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity because a lot of our audience is a younger audience, uh, Chad, to talk to you for just a minute and get a little bit of insight from somebody who's not only been successful but is now a hiring manager because, let's face it, a lot of young people when they come out, well, while they're in school or going you know, uh, through school and uh, just as a career field, go into the restaurant industry. It's one of the largest service industries in the world. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity for you to share some insight, kind of an inside football, if you would, of what a young person might want to do to prepare themselves to be successful coming into the work world, especially a first interview or a first opportunity to knock on that door and say, hey, I'd like to come sell my time to you. You know, I, uh, I look for uh, the positive attitude for sure. And uh, I think having a, a, a can-do attitude, a positive attitude is really uh, the the, probably the, the key to getting a job in the service industry. Mm -hmm. My job is real simple, you know, uh, running a restaurant, um, working in this business, uh, you know, it all breaks down uh, into how you treat people. Right. Um, I come in every day, we open up the door, mm -hmm. we make some food, we serve the food to guests and make sure that they leave happy. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is, that, it's that simple. We can complicate it. You know, yes, there's a lot of things that will happen in a restaurant throughout the day. Having excellent team members with a positive attitude um, helps us to get through those challenging moments. Mm -hmm. When someone comes in for an interview, uh, I'm, I'm looking, are they, are they confident in themselves? Mm -hmm. um, are they looking to be to service uh, other people? And, uh, you know, most of my conversations in an interview are not about where did you go to school? Mm -hmm. um, you know, not about what do you know? I'm asking about the family. I'm getting to know the person, see if uh, they want to get to know me a little bit and uh, um, try to build a connection. And uh, if they're able to build a connection with me, mm -hmm. they're certainly going to be able to build a connection with our guests. See, that's interesting because what I would have thought right off is, you know, what are your grades? Uh, you know, what kind of extracurriculars that you're doing? And what you're saying is, no, 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 that's ancillary. What I'm really looking at is what are your people skills? You know, are you going to come in here and are you going to add to my team or are you going to subtract from my team? And that's what you're basically telling Absolutely. Me. You know, we have 150, 165 team members that work here. That's amazing, by and, the way. Um, as we bring people in, I need to make sure that somebody that I'm bringing onto the team mm -hmm. is going to play nice in the sandbox with the rest of the team members. Okay. And uh, if you bring in uh, team members who do not have the positive attitude, team members who uh, are... Uh, looking uh, to maybe benefit more than uh, be of service to other and right. help the other teammates, um, you can disrupt that uh, rhythm that we have in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. At Hyman's Seafood, we're just not going to let that happen. And that's an important part, too, because like, like Chad was saying, you know, this has to move so quickly here because they've got to turn over the tables, but yet make every experience feel unique to that customer. And yet at the same time, we've all experienced good service and we've all experienced bad service. And it's interesting how the great services and the terrible services stick out in our minds. Um, and the, you know, the final question really about the interviewing side of it is, when you look at somebody, does their attire tell you a lot about them, what they're wearing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, uh, whenever I was growing up, my parents always taught me to uh, um, dress and act um, like you would for the position that you want to have, mm -hmm. um, not the position you currently have. Right. So somebody who uh, is looking to come into the restaurant and make a first impression, mm -hmm. um, I hold them to the standard that my mom and dad had for me. And that was, you know, I needed to look sharp, I needed to look, uh, look good, and I needed to, to be a, a great representation for my family. Mm -hmm. um, so when people come in here to the restaurant, I won't say that I exclude them, I don't, because I believe what's in their heart Right. You know, I can get to in, in some conversations. Um, I had an awesome opportunity this past week to have a conversation with a young man, 17 years old, who uh, has uh, fallen on some hard times mm -hmm. here in Charleston. And uh, unfortunately, it really doesn't have uh, um, a stable home. And he's looking to turn things around for himself. And right. we had that conversation. And during that interview, um, it turned from him trying to get a job to me having the opportunity to... Uh, uh, speak from the heart mm -hmm. and build a connection with a young man who uh, I am convinced will probably be an excellent team member for us. 
and he just needs somebody to give him a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, um, Eli, Hyman, Brad, Gina, the uh, owner and operating partner here at Hyman's yeah. have been a great mentor to me. And uh, they, uh, we like to, to, to say, you know, being a leader is being out in front. Right. That means helping the, the service team pre-bus tables and bus tables and wipe tables down and take dishes uh, to the dish room and take out the garbage. So that means being a manager doesn't just mean standing there with a clipboard. It may mean busting a table yeah. if you, yeah. Here at Hyman's, uh, the leader is out front. Mm -hmm. A boss would be standing in the back pointing. Right. And we don't do that. I, I like that. You know, and I think that's such, such great advice. And I think what you're telling me, um, you know, to be a successful manager and, and to grow in the industry, because let's face it, nobody wants to sign up to do just one job. Your, your goal is to grow. And what you're telling me is if you're going to grow, you've got to learn the jobs around you and always be willing to get your hands dirty. Yeah, absolutely. You know, attitude is contagious. <laughs> you know, if you have a positive attitude, other people will, uh, uh, you know, want to uh, uh, be with you, you know, and that's, uh, um, you know, a key to, to our success here at, at Hyman's. And, you know, I like to say, uh, you know, we set the pace. Right. And pace as an acronym for positive attitude changes everything. Well, you know, I agree with you because I, it was funny the other day, yesterday, my car had broken down um, and I ended up getting a ride with the head of housekeeping from the hotel because they couldn't get a, they could not get a, uh, a cab out to where I was. And I called downstairs and said, hey, I'm in a pinch. I need, is anybody downstairs want to make 20 bucks? And so I'm riding with the head of housekeeping, and I was just so humbled that a hotel would care enough about a guest to say, you know what, we'll, we'll take one of our personal vehicles, put you in there with a maid, she'll get you the four miles, and, and, and that will stick out of my mind. I will not forget that that hotel chain did that. And, you know, like when, the night that we came in here, it was late, you guys were almost closing, and yet the, the, the waiter made us feel like we were just rock stars. And they had no idea that we were Scaly Adventures or anything like that. And that was really cool to me. Now, the final question I have for you um, is this. So I'm, I'm in the service industry, and I want to move up. I want to become a chat. I want to become a manager. What are some of the things that you would suggest to a young person who's ambitious, who says, you know, I like entry level, but I like that next, that next floor. How do I get there? It's conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, the, having a conversation, as I was coming up in this industry, uh, you know, I had a conversation with, with my leaders um, mm -hmm. that were in front of me and, and told them what it is I wanted to do. And then I listened very carefully to what they suggested that I do. So you had a plan and then you involved other people in your plan. Absolutely. So this is where I am and this is where I like to be. How do I get there? Absolutely. And they're the people that are already there. They've already walked it. Yeah. It's very easy when, when, when somebody cuts a path it's very easy to follow it. Right. It's harder to cut it on your own. Why blaze and a trail when you can walk when you the road? Can right? Walk the road, and <laughs> you know, a lot of times, you know, we have a tendency to um, not open up to our leaders and, and tell them what we want. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and my my team members here, they if they don't tell me, I don't know. Yeah. When they tell me, I want to have your job someday. You know, that makes me happy. That's a good thing. That's an excellent thing, and I'm able to make some suggestions, and then it's on their plate. Yeah. It's about what they do next. Yeah. You know, and as they take feedback um, and they grow, um, you know, hopefully someday they'll, they'll have my job, and, and hopefully I'll be servicing uh, Eli and Hyman Seafood in another. We well, see, way. I think that's a great thing as I close out this segment, is the fact that I, I always liked working with the leaders who weren't afraid of, where I, of my ambition. I remember naively sitting down in a, my, one of my first job interviews and the guy said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, your chair. Mm -hmm. And I meant that as a compliment. I was trying to throw out there, hey, you know, I'm a go-getter. And I think he was kind of like, whoa, you know, it was a little bit threatening. And so it's nice when I see a manager who says, no, I want to hear that because guess what? I don't want to be in this chair in five years. I want to be in the next chair above me. Um, or I'm comfortable sharing this chair with somebody else because there's room to grow. And so I commend you for really, you know, saying that. And I just think this is a great segment for young people. And I, Chad, I really want to thank you for taking the time. Sure. My heart, my goal at Scaly Adventures is not just to show cool snakes and canines and things like that, but really to reach out and mentor to young people and even the not so young people. Because what we get a chance to do at Scaly Adventures is talk to some of the most successful people in the world at what they do. And this is a great opportunity to share some of that knowledge with you guys. So thank you. Stay tuned. Stay Scaly. And like I said, if you're in Charleston, South Carolina, check out Hyman's Restaurant and be sure to ask for Chad. We'll see you later.